forsake them. He was right there with them. Well, welcome tonight uh, to the third uh, portion of our series of sermons on why Baptists. Let's take our Bibles tonight, open to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. We'll begin there tonight, and uh, then we'll be um, uh, uh, referring to some other scriptures also. But Hebrews chapter 11, we'll start there this evening. And um, I hope you've been with us in these last uh, two. If you did not get part one and two, it, it'd be really important in, for you to get that. Uh, they're on CD, it's on the internet. Um, the first message on why Baptist, Baptist in their background. The second one was why Baptist in their belief. And then tonight. So I can't keep repeating all that stuff again. Everything, they've got too much material to get to. But tonight, we'll, we'll uh, bring you the message, Baptist and their blood. Now, before I, I read the scripture... Um, I, I'm, I'm not implying at all that everybody who was a martyr, there was over 50 million of them in the Dark Ages. 50 million. And I'm not implying that all them people were Baptists at all. But their big, big majority were people who believed the same thing as we believe. That means uh, that, that even back during this time here, Somebody, somebody bought this for me and sent it to me in the mail, and I have no idea who it did. See that? Cool, huh? Uh, even during this time here, uh, these, these people, Mont Montanists and Novatians and, and Donatists, they were called Anabaptists. Anna is uh, a word that means re, rebaptized. So they were called Baptists, and little by little, that Anna just got dropped. And they just start calling them Baptists. So they believe the same thing. The autonomy of the local church. That means no church has any control over any other church. And no head, honcho somewhere, has any control over any other church. Nobody in any city anywhere has a right to tell our church how we can do, what we can do, what we can preach, how we can worship. That's what autonomy means. The church, local church is autonomous. And then it only has one head. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. No man on earth is the head of a church. The church is the body. The head is in heaven. And, uh, and we, we learned that. Now, when you, when you start talking about Baptists now, people say, oh, the reason you shouldn't be Baptist is because all them crazy people, like them Westboro people up there, up, near, up, there up north, and there are some crazy people who use that name Baptist. They really are. And it's pitiful that they've shamed the name of Baptist like they have. There's some out west, and there's some weirdos who claim the name Baptist. But if you don't, you're, you're something. You've got to be something. And saying there was no Baptist before 1600, uh, when, oh, uh, when uh, uh, what's that guy, John Smith and, and him, William, Roger Williams, to say that there was no Baptist before then, like they'll teach you, if you study secular history, they'll say the Baptist church began in like 1609 or something. That is not true. That is not true. They called them Baptists way back here to 200 A.D. And, and ladies and gentlemen, to say that there were no Baptists before 1600 is like saying there, 
there were no people before castles. See, there's a lot of people. They're just called different names. and But they were individuals. That's the same way Baptist was. So I'm not saying that all the people that I'll mention tonight is, is Baptist. I'm going to say something about the name of a church. And, and I'm going to say that next Sunday night. So you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that. And why so many churches are just decided to drop the name Baptist and become uh, what we would call uh, 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 generic churches to try to appeal to all people. Now, I'll tell you why we're doing that next Sunday night, so you don't want to miss that. Now, tonight I'm going to talk about Baptists in their blood, and we're going to study a subject called martyrs. Martyrs. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a minute, I'm going to show you something. And I invite you tonight to go with me into the halls of the Roman jails, the judgment hall, where it's dark, maybe a candle flicker at one end, wet rocks, rats running in and out in dens and caves. Under Rome, there are the catacombs. Have you ever heard of the catacombs? It's like 500 miles of graves, and they say there's between five and six million Christians buried in those tombs. Take your shoes off, people, because we are tonight going on holy ground. I'm going to talk to you tonight about people that the world was not worthy of. Right. It's what the book said. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and look at the final few verses there, and verse number 32. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 32. And he said here, he said, And time, what shall I say more? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and Jephthah and David also and Samuel and the prophets. This stuff already happened when he wrote this, but it happened again. Look at verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, Obtain promises, stop the mouths of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, wax valiant and fight, turn to flight the armies of the, of the enemy, aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. That means some people could have got out of it and chose not to so they'd have a better resurrection in heaven. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. This is not a trip looking at American Christians with our overpaid, overpetted, overadmired, rich, brat, Christian celebrity preachers who live a life of luxury and lay heavy burdens on widows and wouldn't touch them with one of their fingers. This is a look into our ancestors' life and faith and the life that they lived and the death that they died. You say, some of them wouldn't call back? That's right. I'd rather be a Baptist and not be called one than to be called one and not really be one. Tonight, we're going to start with the Lord Jesus himself, and then I'm going to show you just real quick about a minute of, of something that I want you to look at tonight. And it's about a man that you heard me mention, John Huss. And John Huss was one of the great, great martyrs, just one of many that we'll talk about tonight. I will show you a little reenactment. If you hit me the lights back there, please. Uh, 
a little reenactment just quickly, only a minute and a half, of the burning at the stake of the Bohemian John Huss. What a great man. What a great man of God to stand like he did. Let's look here tonight just for a quick minute at the, at the life of John Huss. Now make sure we got uh, volume here, Andy, and uh, volume on my projector volume, and I hope we can see this tonight. Let's take just a minute. Remember, there were literally tens of thousands, tens of thousands, people, who died this same death. And John Huss, you've heard me say it, died singing, Jesus, thou son of David, or words to that effect, have mercy on me. It's recorded. And I want you to, uh, to uh, look at it here tonight. wouldn't deny his faith. John Huss, this is your last chance to recant and abjure all your errors. I call God to witness that all I have written and preached has been to rescue souls from sin. There can be no turning back. My Lord walked the paths of truth and duty even though it took him to Calvary. Can I, one of his humble followers, turn back now? To witness to God's truth is more important than life. Joyfully, then, will I confirm with my blood all the writings and preachings of truths that I've held. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commit my spirit. the son of David have mercy on me Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me Jesus thou son of David July 6, 1415, that Baptist preacher, he said, I will not recant my faith in what I believe. You can get the lights now, please. Ladies and gentlemen, that man of God stood there. You know why he died? Because the state church demanded that you practice infant baptism. That means all the babies were baptized into the Catholic Church and you could keep them in the Catholic Church their entire lives. Keep the money coming, keep the, organ, the, the, the hierarchy supplied and the, the structure growing. I want to read how it started with Jesus Christ. They killed the Lord. You say, well, uh, well there, them people's kind of weird, wasn't it? No. The Lord Jesus himself was killed by Rome, the hands of Rome. And then James, the apostle James, was condemned. The accuser got saved by the, by, the, by the way and was beheaded in A.D. 36. Thomas, the apostle, James, uh, the, uh, apostle Thomas, preached and was killed in India. Simon was crucified in Egypt. Simon the other was crucified. 
Mark was burned and buried. Bartholomew was beaten and crucified. Andrew was crucified. Peter was crucified upside down. Philip was stoned. Uh, James, the Lord's brother, um, the, the just, was killed. And they all were except John the Apostle. And they put John the Apostle on the Isle of Patmos because he wouldn't boil in oil. And the Lord delivered him. He came back, lived be a hundred years old. And they said, finally, uh, he died. And then Paul got saved. And they cut his head off. Now, a martyr, the definition of a martyr originally meant witness. But after they started killing them, they called it this, a person who seals their testimony with their own blood, just like this man did here. I want you to listen. I'm going to be reading you some stories of some ancient Baptists. Uh we could, we could start out in the early centuries, in the third century, up into the 1,000, when they exiled John, 161, with Polycarp, two, A.D. 200, with the fire, the dark, the dark times are there, even before the Catholic Church officially began. But there were estimated 50 million Christians martyred in the Dark Ages. That's just between 1,500 or 500 and 1500 A.D. It's hard for me and you to believe here in America that somebody would be killed by the government just because they wouldn't baptize their children or they, they did not believe that when the priest put the blessing on the mass that it turned into the body of Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church preaches and still believes that today that when the mass is blessed, it becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And those early Christians said, no, that's not right. That's not him. That is bread and wine. That is not the Lord. The Catholic Church still preaches that. And some of the ones that come out of it, Lutheran, Episcopalian, some of them teach at, uh, consubstantiation. Consubstantiation means it ain't really the body and blood of the Lord, but the body and blood of the Lord are mystically present in the room. That's halfway. Remember what I told you about when they come out of the Catholic Church, they brought some of Rome with them? That's what uh, Luther and John Calvin and John Knox, John Wesley, all of them. Some of, They were great men in their day. John Wesley was a holy man. He preached a lot of them, but they were wrong on their doctrine because they brought, they brought a lot of Rome out with them, such as sprinkling babies. There ain't nothing in the Bible about sprinkling babies. You saw what I done this morning? I prayed for that baby. You can pray and give them to the Lord, but putting water on them or putting them in water don't save them, don't guarantee them to be saved, and it does not guarantee them a spot in the church. Uh, it's hard for us to believe they'd kill somebody for that, but they did. Let me, let me, uh, you listen to me for a minute. Let me tell you about some of our ancient fathers. Belshazzar, Hudmeyer, 1480, the Swiss Baptist who opposed Zwingli. That name may ring a bell. And his heretical infant baptism, Hudmeyer was a strong, effective expositor and baptized thousands of people at the risk of death. He was tortured at the behest of Zwingli in Zurich and burned by the Catholics in Vienna. Vienna. And days later, his wife, was thrown from a bridge and drowned. Hansard Knowledge, 1598 A.D., the noble English Baptist whose ministry in the 1600s was characterized by preaching, writing, and frequent incarceration, incar incar uh, uh, put in jail, incarcerated, and firm Baptist principles. He preached in England and New England alike, as crowds of over 1,000 people were said together outside of his home to hear him preach. They said he was regarded, and he still is revered, as a shining light mm. by the denomination whose name he honored, whose bounds he extended. He died in London September the 19th. And ladies and gentlemen, that old boy went home to be with the Lord. Peter Waldo, 1120. Waldo, Wallet, right over yonder, 
vowel D's, the V's and the W's, pronounced the same. It is believed by some. He was the father of the Waldensians. Not, not really. He was a man that was well known of the Waldensians and sold the majority of his possessions, everything that he owned, except what he had to have to take care of his family and set out preaching from town to town, village to village. The Waldensians lived among the Alps and the mountains over there in Italy and throughout the Piedmont Valley. They were never reformers. They were not Protestants, and they were never in the Roman church, and they assembled in independent churches in antiquity. No group has suffered greater, more severe, systematic persecution than these ancient people, the Waldensians. Let me read you about another one or two. You might recognize a couple of these. William Carey, 1761. He's often called the father of modern missions. William Carey made a profound contribution to the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's known for challenging the Calvinistic voices of his day with the need to publish the gospel in heathen land. It has been said that Andrew Fuller held the rope. Carey went down to the well of foreign mission work. He was responsible for translating the word of God into many, many dialects. John Bunyan, one of the most famous ancient Baptists ever, the, no, the, no, the notorious, famous John Bunyan, 1628. How many of you know what famous book John Bunyan wrote? Would you raise your hand, please? It's called Pilgrim's Progress, second only to the Bible itself as the most read book in, in history. Fox's Book of Martyrs, Pilgrim's Progress, and the King James Bible are the three most read books by Christian in history. John Bunyan said, they said this about him, History knows no man more special to Christian interest than John Bunyan, put in jail in prison for a total of 12 years for preaching without a license from the established church. That means he said, God called me to preach. I don't need your state's approval. I don't believe what you believe. And he went to jail for 12 years. Bunyan wrote Pilgrim's Progress, the most read book in the history of the English language next to the King James Bible. Spurgeon stopped counting on how many times he had read Pilgrim's Progress. He said the book smelled of the dungeon. Adoniram Judson, 1788. Adoniram Judson was America's first foreign missionary. He set sail for Burma with his wife and a small group of laborers. And uh, in 1812, some of there found out his doctrine concerning baptism was wrong. He didn't believe right. By the time he got to where he was going, he got off the boat, was scripturally baptized, and he made a lifetime of suffering and deprivation. He buried his wife, children, colleagues, before seeing the fruit of his labor materialize. Converts and churches in great number, as well as the Burmese Bible, were among his legacies. That's why when we stand up here and say, we invite you to shine in light, Baptist church and we preach and pray and stand on the same beliefs all these guys had back before me and you was ever thought of. The most famous Baptist preacher, Charles Spurgeon, 1834, then we're going to go back. He was a giant of an English Baptist preacher. He needs no introduction to faithful Christians. He, his printed works are are unbelievable, profound, useful quotations, prophetic, and his ministry in general is timeless. He is known for pastoring the Metropolitan Baptist Tabernacle in London. His body of written works is unsurpassed in Christian history. He fought against the dissolution of the right principles of his brethren in the famous downgrade controversy. His perseverance to write so much, preach so fervently, labor so tirelessly, through suffering with immense physical imposition is a testimony to the grace of God. That means when you hear about some great man like Charles Spurgeon, and you think, wow, what a great man he was, he suffered his whole life and preached anyway. Now, we're going
going back a little bit. I ask you, I plead with you, let your mind think while I read these stories. And askew, but in 1521, she was a young Baptist lady. She was only 24 years old, girls. She suffered at the hand of Henry VIII. She is on her way to London. The police arrested her because she rejected the Catholic mass. You know what they called her? A gospeler. A gospeler. She was really a preacher. She went around preaching everywhere she went and told people uh, the, uh, the, the Pope's a, a crook except Jesus Christ, Christ alone, faith alone, Scripture alone, uh, through Him alone, through God alone, and brother, they put her in jail 24 years old in prison and was tortured. She, they tried to pressure her into revealing other Christians and she wouldn't tell them. They put her on the rack. Now the rack, I've, I've got a picture of one at home. Was this, you've, you've seen these old Roman torture things that they used to make back then. It's a thing that would reach about as far as me here to there and it had these wheels on it and they would put your hands up like this and tie them, fasten them to one end and your ankles to the other end. And then the soldiers would crank those wheels and it would stretch you. And it would stretch and stretch. You going to tell us where the Christians are? Never! You going to stretch them more? You going to tell us where the Christians are? No! It's none of your business. And they'd pull their ankles out of socket and pull their shoulders. You ever had a torn rotator cuff? Both of them ripped out. You talk about pain, no medicine, no Tylenol, no trip to the ER, throw back in the dungeon. 24-year-old girl. They beat her with whips. They would brand parts of the body like you was a cow. Cut off your limbs or your tongue. Put out your eyes. Or suspend your body over a slow burning fire. These are our Baptist fathers and mothers that were here before. Me and you were. She spent her last days writing. They had circulated around that she had recanted. She spent her last few days writing. No, I have not. She said, Lord, I have more enemies than the hairs on my head. Let them not overcome. For on thee I cast my care. When she were questioned, they were amazed at her answer. She confounded them wicked interrogators. She had been with Jesus. You know what she said? They said, confess that Christ is the mast. She said, I've read over and over and over in the Bible where God made man, but I've never made where man could make God when they make bread. And they beat her for that. And she said, I'd rather read five lines in my Bible than to go to five masses. I get a bigger blessing that way. They put gunpowder scattered on her body, fastened her to a chain by chains, and they put her in a chair like this because she couldn't walk, and they had to carry her to the fire to be burned because her legs and ankles was out of joint. A large crowd gathered that day. They had to push them back. There were so many people on hand to see if she would deny the Lord. And they said, do you want to deny Anne? This is in 1546. And she said, quote, I did not come here to deny my Lord and Master. And they set her on fire and burned her to death. She's an incredible example. That girl back then, there wasn't no telephone, there wasn't no, 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 no printing presses, uh, there were no, there were no uh, maybe just been invented right around in there a little bit later, but you know, there was no, there's no TV, there was no, she had no idea that a preacher in 2018 would be telling the congregation and people all over the country about what she did. God used that. 
That means if you'll stand for God even when nobody don't even know it, God's got a way of making it count to help lots and lots of other people. My Lord, people. My Lord. We think it's asking too much to come to church three times a week. There's underground churches in, in China that meet every morning for two hours. Every morning. And worship God. And they want to. You know what they said about that girl? They said, none but Christ, none but Christ can make a young lady that strong. None but Christ. Now let's talk about some more. The Paulicians in England, 1160, were arrested because they were Baptists. From the state church, they would not go along. They kept preaching. They called them heretics. Now, if you study secular history in school or college, you'll, they'll be called the nonconformist. They'll be called separatist. They'll be called heretics because the people who wrote that history were an affinity with the Catholic Church. Those nonconformist separatists were really the Anabaptists. And the history wrote and would not give them credit for what they really did. They were martyrs. The word martyr is three times in the Bible. One is, uh, there was, Stephen was the first martyr, but the first time the word martyr is mentioned over there with Paul, Acts 24, maybe somewhere along in there, might be not exactly right. Uh, he said uh, uh, he was called a heretic. That's the first time heretic is mentioned. But martyr is actually uh, three times. I'll give them to you. Uh, they are, they are, I think. Acts 22, Stephen, and verse 20. Uh, Antipas, Revelation 2, 13, and then the mother church whore of Revelation 17 that I'll talk about next Sunday night. You'll find out the future of the Catholic church, and it'll be Revelation 17, 6. But the martyrs were there, and there were millions of them. May the 20th, May the 20th 1416, Jerome of Prague. He was burned. He preached to the executioner who lit the fire. And many times, those people that lit the fire said, I can't believe y'all. I can't believe y'all. They'd fall down and say, Lord, have mercy on me. They saw him suffer, and they repented and got saved. Felix Mance, the Baptist, he was the first, listen to me, to be put to death by the reformers. In other words, some of the reformers had Baptists put to death, not just Catholics. As a matter of fact, Calvinists, man says he's a Calvinist, he better do a little studying on John Calvin because John Calvin had the power to stop a man from being burned at the stake, Savitas, and refused to stop it and allowed him to be burned at the stake because of disagreement on a doctrine. So before you call yourself a Calvinist, you might ought to check it out. And even if he hadn't done that, he didn't know what he's talking about on Calvinism. Ladies and gentlemen, Felix Mance was martyred, drowned in the river January the 5th, 1527. They marched through the streets of Switzerland. His mother and his brother were behind him. Listen. They marched that old boy through the streets in Switzerland and his mother and my brother were behind him. They wouldn't say, honey, you're carrying this too far. Honey, please come back. And they were saying, no, son. No, you go on and serve God. Stand for him. Stand for him. I'm saying to you tonight, every parent in here tonight, you tell your children, stand for Jesus Christ. Stand for Jesus Christ. You stand no matter what this world says. No matter what this world believes. No matter how they laugh at him. No matter how much they come out against him. You teach your kids. You stand up for Jesus Christ. I'd rather die an early death and go out saying I stood for Jesus Christ than to compromise with this wicked world that hated him and crucified him and hates everything that Bible stands for. I'm telling you tonight, folks, they stood. These people stood. The Lord said, Fear not them that can kill the body, but after that, have no more they can do. But rather fear him. Leonard Kaiser, Bavaria, 1527. While on the way to execution, 
they had to roll him up on a cart because he couldn't walk. And listen to this story. This has been confirmed by two different sources. Sometimes, you remember that scripture said God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul? Sometimes God confirmed some of these, these martyrs' death by unusual circumstances. And Leonard Kaiser, they was rolling him in a cart to the fire to burn him because he couldn't walk. And he rolled over in that cart and picked a flower. And he put that flower in his hand and he told them executioners and he told, told the, the, the leaders, he said, if you're able to burn me and this flower, you've condemned me justly. He said, if you can burn me and burn this flower, then you've done the right thing. But if you can't burn me or burn this flower, we'll know you've done the wrong thing. And everybody heard it. And boy, that made them mad. They heated up the fire. They put him on the stake. They tied him. And they said, they lit that fire and it come up. And that man, they, it began to burn his clothes and his robe. And, 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 lay, and they, 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 sometimes they would choke him. Sometimes they would stab him. Sometimes, and they just died. Sometimes they'd put the chain around their neck and their neck would break. And, other, and finally, he fell over dead, but his body wouldn't burn. It wouldn't just burn up, it would just burn it. And he fell over dead. And they said when he fell out like that, his hand opened and there was that little flower that wasn't even burned. And they said to people, said, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. He said you couldn't burn his body or the flower, look at that. And they got mad and chopped his body up and put it back in the fire and it still wouldn't burn. And they said Martin Luther himself heard about that and come and check that story out and verify it. Stood for that old boy. And his killer got saved. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. You kill one, two pops up. You kill a bunch over here, they'll flourish over here. And the church of Jesus Christ has always done better under persecution. Not in times of prosperity like we're in now. I'm, I'm not glad we, I mean, I'm not mad that we got stuff. I'm glad we've got stuff. But it's, it'll make you backslid if you're not real careful. In 1531 in the Netherlands, a reward was offered for Baptist preachers. One of them was named Sink Snyder. He was charged as being a heretic. A heretic is basically anybody that wouldn't baptize their babies or believe in transubstantiation. You're a heretic. They condemned you to die. State church condemned you to die. That's why we don't have state church here in America. We have religious liberty, and that's because of our Baptist forefathers. They got him. They arrested him as an Anabaptist and cut his head off. March 20th, 1530. The Mennonites were Baptists, and they did good, for, but they've strayed away. Even the Waldensen, they're not what they used to be, the now-date Waldensen, but they started off right. One of them, they said, do you believe that's Jesus Christ? He said, I know nothing of a baked God. Don't cook God in the oven. You don't take Jesus in your mouth. Receive him by faith in your heart. Hugmire was a friend of Erasmus. He wrote it and left it for us. He'd go into the fields, the woods, the streets. He was arrested. They put him on a rack. They tortured him. Listen to this story. This is one of the few you hear like this. And when he got tortured and arrested, he got scared and decided he'd deny the Lord. He said, I can't take it. Can't take it. Okay, I recant. I'll do whatever. I'll take the mass. The, I'll do whatever the Pope says. I'll do. And he denied the Lord. And word got out. And they said, Whoo! Did you hear about old Hugmeyer? He denied. He denied. And they appointed a day for a public denial. 
In other words, they wouldn't come out there and do it in front of the whole town so everybody would know. And everybody would say, oh, man, the Catholic Church is right. The heretics are wrong. And he got out there, and Zwingli appointed a day. He actually preached to the crowd, and they couldn't believe it. Some of them were saying, I can't believe Hugmeyer denied the Lord. I can't believe Hugmeyer. Boy, about that time, that old boy got to thinking. And they put him up there to deny the Lord, and he got to thinking. And, you know, he was like, he was sort of like Peter after he had denied the Lord. And he started thinking, oh, God had done for him and all the Lord had meant to him and he got up there and he said I can't do this he said I can't deny him that's done all this for me and he got up there and he said uh, he said infant baptisms of the devil took his stand for God they burned him they drowned his wife they threw him in a sack the wife and threw him in the river Elizabeth January 15th, 1549. She was a former nun and got saved. They arrested her in Belgium, tortured her. They put thumb screws and ankle screws on her. Thumb screws, where they like put you in a vice grip and tighten it down on your thumb. You ever smash your thumb in the car door? You know, that hurts all night long. It turns purple and every color in the world, and you take tying all and everything else. They done both thumbs both ankles pierced her she bled they asked her do you believe that that's a sacrament of, of transubstantiation she said they said do you believe that that's the Lord right there and her answer was this if the Lord is in heaven how can they be eating him down here strong woman there buddy strong woman and in March 27 1549 they put her in a sack threw her in the river. And now Christians say, oh, the church demands too much of us. What does it matter how we live? What does it matter if we come on Wednesday night or Sunday night? It don't really matter how we dress up. These people were thrown in the river, y'all! Geronimus Seagerstone and his wife, Liskin, burned September the 2nd, 1551. She was put in a sack and drowned. They were put in prison, husband and wife. They were not in the same, it wasn't like prison now. They couldn't see each other, talk to each other. And you know what they said? They said he was in one cell, his wife was in another cell. They couldn't see, talk, communicate. They didn't know if the other one was dead or alive or what. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine laying down every night? Don't know if your husband, your wife was being killed or burned. And they finally found somebody that would take letters. They got to where they could write a little letter back and forth to each other. And he wrote his wife a letter and he said, Dear wife, I hope to see you shortly under the altar of Christ. And what he meant was in Revelation chapter 6 where John said, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And he said, he thought we we're them people. And he said, I'll see you under the altar, honey. I'll show you something else now as I close. Just a minute, I'm going to show you one little more little clip. And I want you to look at this. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you a story, and then I'll be done. They said many, many years ago, during the rebellion in China, there was a mission station with Christian young people taken, captured. One hundred young people captured in that, in that uh, uh, seizure, the insurgents captured. They come down there and they knew they as Christians. They placed a cross at the door and they said, if you'll step on this cross and deny the Lord, you can go free. If you don't, we'll kill you. 
the first young person in the youth group came up and said, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. And stepped on the cross and went over. The second young person stepped up and said, I'm not either. I'm not dying either. And stepped on the cross and went over. Seven of them did. The eighth was a young lady. She remembered what the Lord done for her at services and camp and, and how God blessed her. And she said, I'm not going to do it. And she kneeled down before that cross and asked God to give her strength. And they sent her the executioners. And 92 more, or 91 more, followed her and went on. That's what happens when one person. Listen, these people standing here that I talked about, that, that makes me want to stand. Bless God if it ever comes my turn. I mean, you may never have to face the rack or the state. We might now. There ain't no telling what's going to happen here in the next 10 years. They're going to probably pass laws against preaching stuff. Like, like what I'm preaching tonight, you can't preach something. Did you know if you was in Paraguay right now, you couldn't even be a, run for office unless you're a Roman Catholic? That's a church state. Still like that in a lot of parts of the world. And they're going to pass laws against what we believe about sin, about homosexuality, about uh, all kinds of stuff. If it ever does, God give us grace. God give us grace. All right, Jeff, you can get the lights, and let's see if we can get this, and you'll get the CD, Andy, too. And I'm going to see if I can get you something here uh, tonight.
to you about our fathers, what they suffered. I mean, you think it's going to kill us to visit a couple of hours on Saturday? You think it's going to kill us? We give 10% of our money. Are you kidding me? Look what they did. That's asking too much of us, Pastor. Really? 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 I feel ashamed to even talk about these people. I ain't had no trouble compared to them. We ain't had no trouble compared to these people. Let's pray God will make us be a witness. Let's pray God will help us to raise our kids right. Let's pray God will help us to be a good witness and testimony, folks. It may never come to that for us. It may, it may not. I tell you, the war on us today is on our mind and on our flesh. It's not swords and spears and fire. It's movies and music and the flesh and money and food and power and drugs and alcohol. That's, that's how the devil's getting our generation in America. Let's get in this all right. Come on. Let's get around this all right. Husbands, wives, mamas, and daddies. And let's just say, Lord, Lord, help me to stand. My Baptist forefathers did for you. I mean, this stuff's on record, people. I didn't make this stuff up. There was millions of them that we'll never hear about. We'll never even know when we get to heaven. Millions of them never got their name wrote in Fox's Book of Martyrs. Think about it. Oh, dear Lord, dear Lord, help us tonight. Come on, teenagers. Come on, girl. Young people, mothers and daddies. God, help us tonight. God, do something here tonight. God, let our church be strong. Lord God, let us be strong in the faith. Never deny you, Lord. Help us be strong in the Lord and the power of your might. God, give us grace to stand against this wicked, ungodly generation that we live in. We'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing, brother. Let's sing tonight. You come and join us here. Let's all sing. Have thine way. Have thine Thou art the potter, I am the clay, mold me and make me after thy will, while I am waiting, yield it and sleep. Let's sing it up first, everybody. That don't matter. And my life has been worth, preacher. That don't matter. Count it an honor. Count it an honor to be numbered with people like that. It's an honor to be mentioned in the same way. Oh,